Good morning. This morning I am going to be reading from Romans 12, 9 to 13 in the NIV. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. That's a lot of things, right? That's a lot of words. So I looked up the words and um, uh, BibleHub.com uh, and their interlinear and then also um, a little bit in a thesaurus um, that comes with uh, Microsoft Word, which is what I used to write on. Um, so I'm going to be going through these definitions because if we don't, if we don't know what these words mean, we don't know what the message is, and we might think we know what they mean, and then you look them up in the interlinear, and you find out that, you know, the English word might mean, you know, and I speak English obviously, <laughs> the English word might mean one thing or mean a lot of different things because English words can mean a lot of different things. Um, and then you go into the Greek, um, it, it can have a, a, an entirely different meaning than what we think it does, or it can be um, somewhat of a, a different meaning, or it might be right on to what we think, you know. But it really helps um, if you if you could take the time to, when you're reading the scriptures, especially ones like this, where you can take time to go through the individual words, you know, and not just you know gloss over blah 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 okay good you know you know because these words are all chosen uh, for a specific reason now the niv or the esv uh the words that they choose uh, may not be if you look in the interlinear it may be a little different word and you might see that as, as i'm going through these um anyway so i'm going to look at love must be sincere now in the english language the word love can means so many different things. Uh, it can have to do with lust. <laughs> it can have to do with sexual situations. Uh, it can have to do with uh, romance, um, a, a very emotional feelings uh, toward another person. Um, it can be uh, to, to, to like something, you know, like you say, oh, I love ice cream, or I love, uh, I love grapes. <laughs> Or I love watermelon, you know, uh, and then at the same time you say you love God and you love other people. Okay, so it's not exactly apples to apples, is it? Um, so it can mean a lot of different things. And so uh, and, and love uh, oftentimes is in, in American English is just used mainly of uh, warm, fuzzy feelings towards somebody. Uh, but it can be conditional on... Um, whether the other person is, is loving us or not, but we're to love whether other people love us or not, you know. Anyway, so love must be sincere. So this word love in the Greek is agape. And what it means is it centers in moral preference. It means to prefer and refers to divine love, uh, which equals what God prefers. So if we're loving with this kind of love, we're going to be preferring what is morally pure. We're going to be preferring what God prefer, prefers, which is what is honest and trustworthy and loyal on, uh, to God and um, uh, what is righteous and godly and um, obedient to him. All the things that, that God prefers. Uh, so when, when it has this word love, uh, understand most of the time in the scriptures when it says love that it is this this uh, you know love that, that is from God you know because God is love you know right you know so whatever the character of God that's this kind of love you know uh, though sometimes it, it is a, a more of a friendship you know love but in this case this is uh, what it is um, Still, love comes from God, and God is love, you know, and so if we love with that kind of love, you know, we, we should be people who 
uh, prefer, you know, what God prefers, uh, which is what is holy and righteous. Okay, so this love must be sincere. We can't fake it. <laughs> it needs to, well, some people do, but uh, you're not supposed to fake it. It's supposed to be without hypocrisy. It's supposed to be honest, uh, free from hidden agendas and selfish motives. You know, a lot of people will be nice to you, you know, and, and act like they love you, that they care about you uh, because they're trying to get something out of you. And it's a sad reality, but <clears throat> it's the way things are, you know, especially in, in today's world, you know, it's more and more that way that you, you know, you can't, you can't trust people and their motives, you know, and it, it, it which is really sad because there's so many people out there with hidden agendas and just using other people for their own advantage. And they're just being friendly to them because they want something out of them, you know, so you, we, you know, this kind of love involves a lot of wisdom and discernment to go along with it. You know, we have to be very careful on that. But anyway, that, uh, we're to love sincerely and honestly, not fake it, not be phony, not be hypocrites, um, and not do it just to get something out of somebody because we love people, whether they love us back or not. And that's, that's a tough kind of loving to do. Okay, so we're to hate what is evil. And to hate, in this case, means to abhor, to detest, to have a horror of be repulsed by and having no part in. So if we really hate what is evil, we're going to be repulsed by it. You know, we're, it's going to make us sick. You know, we're going to detest it. We don't want to have any part in it. You know, and not too many people, <clears throat> not too many people even professing faith in Jesus Christ truly hate and detest and repulse evil because so many of them are playing with evil. Um, sadly, so, okay, evil is what is bad, wicked, malicious, uh, sinful, immoral, dishonest, deceitful. Those are all things that we're to have no part in, we're to be separated from, we're to, we're to just, it's, it should make us sick, you know, we should be d d repulsed by it, uh, and, and we should have no part in it, we should not play with evil one single bit, you know, and that has to do with the things we take into our minds and our eyes through what we watch, you know, uh, either on television or in videos or movies or cartoons or uh, on social media or on the Internet. You know, any place where, uh, you know, you can <laughs> view something with your eyes and take in into your heart and your mind and your attitudes, you know, because what we take in. That's garbage in, garbage out. What we take in is uh, who we become in, in character uh, uh, that we willfully uh, take into our hearts and our minds um, on a daily basis. So if we're to have no part in that, then that should change for a lot of people <laughs> what they're watching, what they're listening to, you know, and they're listening to and watching every day you know and this a day of media is is like constant you know um that we we should we should test everything that we are listening to and watching to make sure that we are detesting evil and and if we're being entertained by it then we need to cut it out of our lives okay um we're to cling to what is good uh, and, and to cling is, is to be glued together, uh, to join ourselves to, to bond, to adhere to. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's like, you know, glued, you know, glued is, you know, you, you can't pull it apart, you know, no matter how hard you try, you can't, it's glued, you know, it's, it's secure. This is how we are to be in relation to what is good and not good is, you know, we define good, you know, like, oh, that tastes good, you know, well, that's, that's subjective, <laughs> you know, because what tastes good to me might not taste good to somebody else and vice versa, you know, but good, this, this has to do with as God defines good, because uh, it originates from God and it's empowered by him in the life of the believer through faith. Um, so it is, uh, you know, scripturally, biblically, you know, 
uh, what God defines good, which is what is righteous and holy and, and godly and, and those types of things, um, things that are opposite of evil and wickedness and, and lies and all that kind of stuff. Um, and these are the kinds of things that we're to bond with, you know, but we are to be separate from all that is evil and that is malicious and immoral. Uh, and morality should have no part in our lives. Um, we're to be devoted to one another, and this is talking about to other Christians. And other Christians, uh, biblically, are those who have died with Christ to sin. Uh, they've been changed in heart and mind of the Spirit of God. They are now walking in holiness and righteousness and obedience to the Lord. Not absolutely in sin. Not, not, uh, not absolute. Not the word. Not necessarily in, in absolute sinless perfection, um, but uh, in faithfulness, in, 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 in practice, they are walking in holiness and righteousness and obedience to the Lord, you know, that they are living the kind of life that this is kind of, that, that this is talking about, and they're not walking in sin, they're not participating in what is evil. These are the kind of people that we are to be devoted to um, because they are like-minded you know, with Christ, we have to be like-minded with Christ, first of all, and then uh, we can be like-minded with others who are like-minded with Christ. Um, and th these are the people that we should be devoted to uh, and to honor and uh, devoted. It's just a big affectionate friendship, uh, like, a, like a family kind of love, a family that really loves each other. Not every family does, you know. But, uh, you know, when a family is really closely knit together, you know, you know what that's like, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, some people joke about that and they say, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll criticize each other, but let, don't let anybody else criticize them or they'll, they'll, they'll take that person on united, you know. So, you know, that family tie or, or to be, you know, like these are our real brothers and sisters, you know. Um, that that's how or to, to care about one another, you know, um, and then to honor uh, is to show respect and value and regard for a devotion to appreciate, uh, to recognize. Um, and then it talked about in the interior to go before them as a leader, lead by example, modeling proper behavior uh, that um, but to honor Honor doesn't always have to be uh, saying things about people that are, you know, good things, you know, because some people, there may not be something good, you know, you can say about them. Now, if we're honoring other like-minded Christians, there should be things we can say, you know, uh, 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 that are kind about them. But the main thing is we, we need to be devoted to each other. We need to care about each other. We need to be interested in each other's lives. We need to not be ignoring each other. You know, we need to be encouraging each other because we all need this. And it is it is really lacking today in, in today's modern church uh, kind of, of setting. Uh, but this, this is how we're supposed to be. We're to be diligent or to be zealous, um, making full effort, uh, quickly obeying the Lord, uh, not lacking in zeal. And uh, if you're lacking in zeal, you're you're lazy, you're delaying, you're dragging one's feet, you're reluctant, you're unwilling to act. That should not describe the true follower of Jesus Christ. We should be those who are on fire for the Lord. That spiritual fervor or fervent in spirit is a, is, is a bubbling over. It's to be an ardently passionate and deeply committed with an accompanying desire to set one's heart on to, to want to serve the Lord, you know, not like, oh, no, I have to do that, you know, but yay, I get to do that, you know, you know, we should be excited about serving our Lord. I mean, it doesn't mean we always have to be, woo, you know, I tell you, when I wake up in the morning, I know the Lord wants me to sit right. I'm not jumping up and down. <laughs> it takes me a while to wake up, you know, but I'm there. You know, and I'm and I'm I'm moving and I'm doing what he's called me to do. Um, so it isn't always a, a physical, you know, excitement, but it, it is a love for the Lord and, and a desire to serve Him, and, and not being lazy and just wanting to serve ourselves instead. Uh, so we're supposed to be um, joyful in hope, and hope is not this 
oh, I hope this is going to happen, but it is a, a an expectation that something's going to happen. Uh, it's to anticipate it. It's to be sure of, to be certain of, you know, uh, th that kind of hope. Um, and we are to be uh, patient in, in, in affliction and, and tribulation, uh, and that involves persecution uh, and, and going through difficult times, having people mistreat us and hate us. Um, we are to be patient, we're to stand our ground, you know, and, and to show endurance and to bear up against all of those things. Um, and, and we're to be faithful in prayer. And prayer is two-way communication between us and God. It's not us all just saying, Lord, I want, I want, I want, you know. But it's it's talking to the Lord, you know. And it's, it is it is taking our request to Him. But it's honoring Him. It's valuing Him. It's worshiping Him. Uh, and, and, and it's listening to him and letting him speak to us and then responding to what he says to us in, in faithfulness and obedience. You know, it's, it's a friendship between us and the Lord. It's, it's that ongoing open communication uh, between us and the Lord where he can talk to us at any time of day or night and we can talk to him the same way no matter what else we're doing. It doesn't have to be a formal time that we sit down and say our prayers um okay uh and then we're to be people who show hospitality you know now if you look it up in the interlinear it says love to strangers uh friendliness shown to strangers uh but it could be having people into your home for a visit or a meal uh but it should be something that is giving honor and glory to God and not things that are dishonoring to God uh, doesn't mean you have to have a Bible study, you know, but you need to be honoring God, you know, and all that you do. Okay. All right. This is long enough. <laughs> you know, but that was a lot to cover, you know, so we just need to, to practice what the scriptures teach us that we need to do. And, and it really helps if we understand what the words mean. So we know how we're to put that, those things into practice. Okay. Uh, talk to you later. <laughs>